So welcome guys to the second part of uh, post-processing tranquility, my latest uh, photograph. Uh, last week we took a look at how I integrated the SLR Lounge preset system into my workflow in the studio and uh, how I created a preset that acted as the basis for my image. This week we continue editing, this time in Photoshop, and uh, we're going to take a quick look at all the layers that I have in this Photoshop file and uh, what my idea was behind the editing process and how I created this painterly look. So let's get started. Here first I have another layer which is just a duplicate of the background layer. This is what I always start with because uh, I just want to keep the background layer untouched just in case I need to go back and start again or if there's something I need to change. So I usually leave the background layer alone just create a duplicate layer and start working on it. First we have here a hue and saturation layer and when we turn it on and off if you look at the dress here you can see that what I did here was I changed the hue of the cyans so let's just take a quick look here at the cyans and you'll see I pulled up the saturation a bit and I changed the hue to a more of a greenish tone. So th this is what I did already in the preset uh, last week in Lightroom, but I still felt I wanted it to be even more greener, so I changed the hue a bit. So that's what I did here. And after that, uh, we click on this hue saturation layer, and if you look at the sofa here, what I did was I just uh, added some green into it as when I created the preset in Lightroom, uh, it slightly desaturated the sofa, so I wanted to bring back that color, so that's what I did here. After that, in Lightroom, we created this soft blur in the edges of this image, but uh, it really doesn't look natural, so what I did was I created a noise layer and uh, masked it so that it's only in the edges, so as you can see, here I added noise and uh, only on this uh, blurred areas on the edges the center of the image does not have any noise in it. Adding noise into the blurred areas just makes it look slightly more natural so that's why I did that. Then here I have a levels adjustment layer which just darkens up uh, the bottom area here as I did, really didn't want the viewer to focus here, I wanted all the focus to be here on our subject. So I just darkened that area up there. Then I noticed that if you take a quick uh, close look here, you can see our model's legs. And I really didn't want that, so what I did was I just darkened up that area here as well. So let's turn it on and off here so you can see. So I just darkened it so that you really don't focus on the legs at all. Then here I have a folder with my dodge and burn uh, layers. So when we turn it on and off, you can see my dodge and burning. So what I did, I just uh, brightened up the highlights and darkened the shadows using the curves adjustment layer. I've done a tutorial on dodging and burning earlier so if you want to check that out you can check it and uh, there I show you guys how I use curves in order to in order to dodge and burn my photographs then we have here a curves adjustment layer and if you take a quick look here we can see what I did uh, I always start with the blue channel here and what I did I added some a tiny bit of blue into the shadows and yellow into the highlights and midtones and then I added a very tiny bit of green into the midtones as well as a very little of red into the midtones as well but mostly I did some stuff in the blue channel yellow into the highlights and slight blue tone into the shadows after that I just uh, sharpened up the image using a high pass layer with the blending mode of soft light and uh, then I kind of didn't like this little white area here it kind of distracted me 
so I just clone stamped it out so now it's not here anymore and then this layer here when I turn it on and off you see it's kind of a texture but so what I did here if we turn this back to normal I took just a white brush and painted this random texture on the image then put it on overlay and lowered the opacity down to 81 about that way I got this uh, some texture into the image pretty random but it looks quite nice in this context so I, I left it there then on this layer here what I did was I just changed the hue of the uh, floor here so to a more brownish orange tone which I felt worked better with this image and then I was I felt that the image was almost done already what I wanted to change was I wanted to add add some volume into the hair here so what I did I used liquify and just made this area here slightly rounder so when I turn it on and off you can see just added a bit of volume into the hair nothing major uh, just made it slightly more rounder and added volume into the hair then here I have two texture layers in this group here I'll zoom in closer so you can see when I put it on so what it does it adds these random artifacts into the edges of the image let's turn it on and off here you can see and uh, I try to keep my textures away from the subject and her skin as that really doesn't look normal but on the background that's totally okay so it adds a nice effect into the background so that's why I did it, did it here and then as we were going for a very painterly look I felt it would be appropriate to add a canvas texture on top of the image so that's what I have going on here let's put it on normal for a second so this is kind of the texture that I have here and then I used a soft light with a very low opacity only 9% but if you look here on the background zoom in maybe slightly like here you can see these little square canvas texture stuff here so when I turn it on and off very subtle effect but it works pretty nicely on this image here then as I had worked with uh, several different hue and saturation and curves uh, adjustments here I felt it's always a good idea to add a solid color layer on top of the image with a very very low opacity just to tone the image in a way that it brings all the colors back together so I, what I did here I have a solid yellow yellowish color layer on a very low opacity of 4% is the adjustment here color and then uh, let's turn it on, on and off so you can see so it just kind of brings the colors all back together makes it look more harmonious in a way and then the last step that I did was I created it's what I did here but I'll show you what I did so I created a stamp visible layer so I push down shift command and E which creates a stamp merges all the layers beneath it that are visible and uh, oh just a second so shift alt command and E sorry about that so that merges all the layers beneath it and creates a new layer out of it like this and then this is what I did to achieve the final step of the painterly look that I was going for so what I did was I created this layer and then went down to filter oil paint this was actually my first time using this uh, using this adjustment here let's just zoom in into the hair I'll show you guys so what I used I used a stylization of about four cleanliness of about four scale down bristle, bristle detail all the way down shine all the way down and our angular direction you can really choose I used about 170 and what it does it really creates a more of an painterly look as you can see here everything is kind of smudged and uh, looks almost like a painting 
So what I did, I did this and click OK. But I didn't leave it like this. What I did was I zoom in here. So I'll turn this on and off just to show you guys. So without the layer, this is like a photograph. And then with it, it kind of looks more like a uh, painting or a picture. And then, but this is too slightly too much. What I decided to do, I was just pulling down the opacity about down to 55%. And that way, it's kind of there, but uh, it's not as obvious. But when you look at the image as a whole, it looks pretty good and almost like a painting. So that's what, that was uh, what I was going for, and that's why I did this final step as well. So that's pretty much it. That's what I did in Photoshop. And um, as always, if you guys have any questions about what I did or why I did what I did or requests for future episodes, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you all out as well as I can. So thank you guys once again for watching and uh, see you next Tuesday. Bye.